All right, hey guys, and now we are back with part two of our um, known issues, uh, pretty much thread review. And uh, what this is, if you guys did not watch part one, I am going to link part one, and I'm also going to link this thread down below if you guys want to go check it out for yourself. But what this is pretty much is it's a thread where the developers show off uh, known issues that they are currently working on. And um, what's it called? And they update it every single big patch. So this was recently updated for the 1.5.4 beta. We have gone over this for the 1.5.3 beta when it came out. So uh, I am going to go over this every single time a big patch comes out. I read over what they have, uh, kind of give my input, and we go from there. So uh, like I said, I am going to link part one. We got uh, from animations all the way to crashes in part one, so all of these. And now we're going to finish this up. And uh, yeah, let's get it started. So economy and trade, the issues regarding the tannery workshop are being investigated. So tannery workshops were very, very good. Now the new workshop, if you guys want to know the, you know, what's the best, it's pretty much wool weaveries, sometimes linen weaveries, but not really. Uh, I'll stick to wool weaveries. If, and then if a wool weavery doesn't work for you, make it into a brewery. Those are like the two best things right now is wool weaveries and breweries. Before it was tanneries, but not anymore. Then we have shops might be selling user craft weapons even if the player did not sell those weapons. So that is a problem. Obviously, whenever you go the crafting um, or the smithy route and become like that type of player, um, a lot of the weapons you craft will end up on the local markets. I guess they found out the recipe or something and they started selling it, right? Then we have kingdoms and diplomacy. Uh, there's no mercenary leave option while talking with lords. That should be there. Obviously, you can do it in the clan screen, but that should be also an option when you're talking to a lord and you're trying to do it that way. Then we have executing any lord decreases relationship with uh, random five to six clans. It's an intended design. That's very actually weird. I did not know that's actually how it worked currently. So it's supposed to be specific ones that they are friends with and family with, but it looks like it's just random clans, which is, yeah, that's definitely a problem. They have sometimes the settlement owner election starts with a delay. This is true. I have seen this uh, plenty of times where you take over a settlement and then um, nothing would pop up until like, um, what was it? What is it like whenever you need to make a decision, whenever it passes like what, 24 or 20 or 48 uh, in-game hours, whenever that happens um, and then you need to make the choice right there and then, that's the only pop-up I get. I don't get the initial pop-up that says, hey, here's a vote. Then we have decisions. Uh, decision support percentage is incorrect in some cases. Yes, um, they're gonna say, "Hey, we approve this policy with 80%. Just uh, you know, go go to vote with it." You go to the vote, it, it's like a hundred percent disagree or something like that. You know what I mean? And that is a problem. Then we have kingdom war and peace decisions are being investigated. Okay, so this is pretty much like I think it's AI related, whatever they choose. Then we have investigations ongoing regarding war score calculations. Okay, so this is like your score of like how much casualties, how much raids, how much settlements were taken and stuff of that nature. They have counsel the commons law effects uh, aren't working properly. The issues are being investigated. Hopefully they buff it because this used to be the goat of policies. This, this policy used to be so good, but they just ran it to the ground. Like it used to be like plus one influence for every single noble in your kingdom or something along those lines. This used to give me like plus 50 or plus 40 influence. Then they did it to 0.1 and then they did it to 0.1 of just certain nobles. And at this point, you'll be lucky if you get like plus one or two with this anymore. Um, so yeah, they ran this to the ground, rest in peace. Um, also on this topic, I feel like, look, this game, um, it has potential, Has there's a lot of potential for everything. But the end game is not really there. I feel like there should be end game for every single part of the game, including policies. There should be some strong, strong policies that you need a lot of support to actually pass, but should be very, very good for your kingdom if they are passed. You know what I mean? And stuff of that nature. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. Then we have, in some cases, uh, proposer clans do not have enough influence to propose kingdom decisions. That is a problem. They don't. They aren't gaining enough. So. That, but see, but that might be caused because there's been a lot of um, a lot of the policies that provide influence have been nerfed drastically, so that might be a part of the reason. Then we have level design. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff here, but a lot of this stuff is very uh, technical, very minor in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, 
I'm just kind of reading it through my head. You guys can kind of read it kind of on the screen right now as well. A lot of this looks like we see wrong spawn points in certain um, scenes. I could read the scenes out by name, but you're not going to know what they mean anyways. You know what I mean? Like Battle Terrain G, Battle Terrain 001. You can't even picture that in your head if you really think about it, right? But um, yeah, some problems. Uh, what else do we got? Some, some trees are too bright. Some siege improvements. I'm just looking for some shop labels might be shown as duplicates. Uh, the kind of minor issues, you know, obviously level design kind of, um, are issues as well, right? So map issues are known, very vague, uh, navigation mesh issues and stuff of that nature. So if you guys want to pause this or read this for yourself, like I said, the link will be down below, but these are, they are what they are, right? Next we have is marriage. Uh, players can marry their children. Jesus Christ. Uh, that is not intended design. They had to add the obviously at the end too. <laughs> oh man. Uh, then we go, we're aware that you're not able to ma uh, arrange marriages for your family members. They are aware that's a, that that's, you know, thing that you can't do right now, but I think they are working on it. Then we have, there are uh, some reports regarding AI marriages. We're investigating this issue as well. Kind of vague. I don't know exactly what they mean. All right, miscellaneous. Okay, here we go. So prison guards are disappearing when entering and exiting an interior scene of a town. This is not intended design. We have seen this before. They have said this before. Then we have the game sometimes uh, names children the same name. Uh, this happens especially in twins. Sometimes you'll just get the prompt for one name and they'll both be named that same name. So there's that. Then we have player uh, characters eyes don't focus on the agents at the beginning of the conversations. They sometimes be wandering. Like, just wandering completely. Uh, then we have, uh, having tournament arrows might change the damage type of your whole army. That's not good, so it makes everybody... Well, uh, Devil Advocate. That's kind of good if you want to get more prisoners, because tournament arrows are blunt arrows, therefore they will knock people out, not actually kill them. So, uh, it could be good, right? What also would be cool... Um, this is probably gonna be have to be a mod, right? Or maybe it could be in the game if you really think about it. But if there if there was a way to kind of um, what's it called? To kind of uh, tell your archers what type of arrows to use in this fight, as in, um, like maybe a command during the fight where it's like archers go, um, you know, blunt arrows or archers go. You know what I'm saying? Like sharp arrows or something like that. And they would change the arrows. They would have like two quivers. But then again, the quiver system would have to be reworked. I don't know. Something along those lines. I think that would be very, very cool. Or And especially for uh, infantry or for cavalry, they would be, you'd be like, hey, take out your maces. We're trying to get some prisoners. We're not trying to actually, you know. I don't know if this would be done in battle scene or before the battle scene. Either way, I think that, that, that should be done in some uh, form of way. Uh, let's get back to it. So, uh, the copy and paste function doesn't work in the end game in the end game encyclopedia. Okay. Then we have some agents in the scenes are walking too fast. Okay. They have troops that died. Yes. Some agents in the scene are walking too fast. Yes. You know, you know what I really, <laughs> you know, when you really realize that you have not leveled up your athletics at all, whenever you're in the hideout and you tell your, um, other troops with you to, uh, like charge. If you tell them to charge, they are so much faster than you. Unless you have leveled up your athletics. But a lot of people level up riding because riding is very important in the game. Most people don't really get off their horse in the game. So, yeah, they, they get really fast. Then we have uh, troops that died in rival gang quests get resurrected after the fight. Obviously, that shouldn't happen. Then we have the game might crash when invoking council.clear in the dev council. Okay. Then we have prisoners and besieged castles become neutral after the same castle is besieged by the enemy. They should not be. Wait, hold on. Prisoners in a besieged castle become neutral after the same castle is besieged by an enemy. That's very confused. That's very. It's, wor it's worded very confusingly, but okay. Then we have the construction time calculations are wrong. So construction of upgrades. I'm guessing. Then we have uh, pressing F1 right before hideouts, boss cutscene causes the order icon to show in a dialogue screen. So there is a lot of problems with uh, 
uh, players, I'm guessing, doing certain things like pressing F1 or crouching like we went over in the, um, what do you call it, in part one where it causes uh, weird stuff to happen. Then we have uh, prisoners donated to the settlements disappears immediately. The prisoners that are were donated, okay. Then we have troops shown in the encyclopedia look older than they are. Then we have tutorial refugees only have one face preset, okay. Then we have there's a bug that prevents workshops from spawning the most expensive equipment. This this is this this is this is a problem. This is a problem we've had for a long time, and if they do fix this, it's actually going to be great. Because then you're going to be able to go into a town, and there's a chance that a town has, you know... Because right now, there's barely any chance. It's almost negative chances that you're going to find very, very expensive equipment at a town or something of that nature. So, yeah, this is a big one. Then we have uh, Imperial Board Game AI issues are being investigated. I have not had any problems with the board games. I do love the board games of the game. If you have not tried them yet, please do. Then we have when the player has an unmounted uh, companion in a cavalry and horse archer formation. Horse archers are referred to as footmen. Very weird. Then we have uh, mounted unit morale rarely breaks. That is a problem. It should sometimes break, I'm guessing. Then we have because uh, eight vassals can be, can, can be glitched inside uh, Shikand. Uh, we're investigating this issue. There it is. Okay. Next one, we have other game design and game balance. So companion parties constantly lose morale except uh, when you take them to an army. So they always lose morale unless they're part of your army. That shouldn't be the case. Some of the mercenaries' battle equipment is missing. Sometimes the towns can... Oh, yeah, so some of the mercenaries you get from towns and taverns, sometimes they don't have the right equipment or they're missing it. That is a problem. Then we have sometimes the towns can have zero prosperity. Big problem. Then we have uh, settlements, garrison slash militia are not affected by food stacks. They should be affected by food stacks. Food stocks. Uh, that, which is like, you know, how much food you have uh, stocked up, obviously. Then we have uh, villagers delivering goods to wrong locations. This is being investigated. Okay. That's going to mess up the economy in a way. Then we have the players are getting tributes from kingdoms way stronger than theirs. Yes. Yes. In my playthrough, my clans like the clans under me they've all proposed for us to go because we have like about i think five thousand power around there right and they have proposed to give every single small kingdom that has no settlements only has maybe an army of like 100 200 300 they all i have to pay a couple hundred a day to every small kingdom because that's what my clans have decided to vote for even if i try to say no it's like i'm gonna have to waste like 500 influence to say no because everyone agrees to let's pay these small guys to just not it's a problem <laughs> Then we have uh, crafted items ending up in shops and tournament prizes that is being investigated. Then we have party speed uh, not recalculated after leaving an army. Okay. So you would still be slow like you were in an army. And this one right here, I kind of enjoy it that sometimes they are part of it. But sometimes if you craft too much weapons, it's just flooded. The shops are flooded. The tournament prizes are never anything but your weapons. Next we have is performance. So particles can bug out when the player changes an option and hits done. Intel GPU sometimes shows the wrong memory amount. Okay, that's a problem actually, of quite a significant one. And Battalion Castle layout performance issues are known. Okay, that is true. That is, that's actually very true. Um, I have experienced this problem with certain Battalion Castles. They have quests and issues. There it is. And like always, we will show no love to quests. And I'm just kidding. But um, like kind of like with the how this level design one worked, uh, you guys can pause it and look at this. Um, I'm still going to stand on this hill for as long as it takes until quests are fixed. I think quests are very cool the first time around um, and kind of early game. But after that, quests fall off like a cliff. I think there needs to be somehow, I don't know exactly how you would change them. I don't know exactly how you'd make them viable mid to late game. Um, or even when you have a kingdom, there's no reason. Like there's, you can't even, taking the time out, like let's say you're the ruler of a kingdom and taking the time out to um, go and do some quests by yourself while two other kingdoms decide to start war with you. 
uh, one kingdom decides to do this, you need to go to this other place to do that. And then in the middle of all that, you need to, uh, what's it called? Try to do a quest, it just doesn't work. Um, also, the rewards from a quest in terms of gold, there's so much better ways to get gold mid and late game. Uh, early game, even early game, there's probably better ways. You know what I'm saying? You can go get a, get a hideout or get into a bigger battle with a lot of, uh, you know, low level uh, troops, but a high amount of them, and you can make more gold. And also on the reputation side, which is another thing quests give, um, in my opinion, um, you know, it's much better to get three companion parties out there, and they will literally gain you reputation all around the world automatically over time. Which is so much better in my opinion than going to do these quests. So it is what it is. Like I said, you can pause it, um, do all that, but I feel like quests need a lot of fixes, a lot, and and a lot of these are just you know, um, you know, th there's a related issue. Uh, it's very vague, right? Train troops quest does not update properly. Uh, rewards isn't specified. They, m by the way, this. This quest right here, the Merchant Caravan Escort quest, when I first did it, I received 30,000 dinars in like a week of in-game, like an in-game week, right? And I thought, oh my god, I finally found the quest that was good. Couple patches down the line, now it takes like 2-3 in-game days, which is a lot quicker, and you make literally 90% less. You make like two to $3,000 instead of the $30,000 you made before. Or dinars, right? So, I don't like the direction they're going with quests. I think we need end game quests. I think we need quests to um, kind of as you progress up, the quests progress up. Or as time goes on, like in game time, it could be based off the in game time. Or I don't know, just something. Something needs to be done to quests, in my opinion. But these are a lot of like minor issues, you know, bug issues, stuff is missing, stuff of that nature, right? That's what's being pretty much investigated here. Next up is save and load. Food stocks will change when the player is uh, residing in a town and reloads the save they are playing. Very weird, but okay, that does need to be fixed. If user interface, oh my goodness. So the wrong number might be shown when prisoners are ransoming. That is a problem. Um, so you do, okay, that is that's a big problem because when you're deciding to ransom prisoners, it always matters kind of what the cost is and how much you really need, right? In some rare cases, the uh, wrong hero's name will be shown in the Siege UI. Okay, then we have Banner. The summon menu does not get updated after the summon is taken by the other faction. Okay, kind of minor. The kingdom we create is not shown on the Kingdom Town Encyclopedia. I've actually not seen it. I've always seen the kingdom. I don't know. Huh, that might be a rare thing, but I can see why that's a problem. Then we have uh, Clan Banner does not get updated after the clan tier reaches 2. Okay, if both parties are wounded and have zero battle ready units, encounter menu shows up, it's not intended design. I have seen this before where it shows zero and if you try to fight them, you'll either crash or something else will, something else will happen to your game. So, that is a problem. Then we have some beer slash hair won't render on thumbnails. Okay. Then we have a uh, trade report before hitting uh, done can, be, can block the whole screen. Okay, we have this issue and working towards it. Okay, then we have uh, the wrong banner is shown in the tournament screens. We have encyclopedia will scroll up if you click the back button. Then we have beards not showing on portrayal. There's a lot of beard problems. <laughs> there's like two here. There's a couple there. There's uh, what's it called? I'm pretty sure in the art one as well. Some beard. Yeah, there's a lot of beard problems in this game. Oh man. Um, then we have what else do we have? These are all kind of minor in my opinion personally. Uh, they have troops that are ready to upgrade are not shown as ready to upgrade on prisoner window. Okay. Yeah, that would, that would actually be a cool thing to add. Um, pretty much whenever deciding if you want to recruit a prisoner or not, see how far they are to their level up or see if they're ready to level up once you recruit them. So you can automatically recruit them and then level them up to the next position. I think that would be actually a cool addition. Then we have very long names can hide information in certain menus. Uh, the second brother not showing up in the characters tab. That's a problem. They have so, uh, South Empires and West Empires factions biographies are missing in the encyclopedia. Okay. They have sometimes character portraits and encyclopedias have visual glitches. 
There is no option to sell the Lord, uh, sell the Lord prisoners individually. Okay, when you're trying to sell Lord's prisoners that you have, okay. Then we have missing textures on the crafting screen are being investigated. Form fitting athletics perks still, uh, perk effect still is not applied on UI, okay. Then we have if the tutorial is not finished, the movement tutorial will be shown in the deploy, uh, deploy phases of sieges. I'm guessing that's not intended. Then we have notables wear different civilian equipment um, or their combat armor on quick talk. That is not intended. Okay. Then we have uh, item preview screens, clo uh, close buttons, clickable area. Hold on, I can't. Hold on. Item preview screen, close buttons, clickable area is not what is shown in the game. Okay, kind of confusing. Then we have game shows an incorrect number of wounded troops in some cases. That could also be a big problem. Okay. Now, that is all single player. Let's do multiplayer. I'm pretty sure that this is very short of a list. But let's get into it. So, um, first one, audio issues. This is for multiplayer and single player. Issues regarding the reverb sound effects are being investigated. I have no idea what reverb is. So, um, unfortunately, I can't really talk too much about that. But, good to hear. Then we have combat for multiplayer only. Can block up hit by down block and vice versa wait, wait wait can block up hit by down block and vice versa this issue is being investigated i have no idea what this means again very weird wording i'm so sorry <laughs> okay then we have uh, the next two are for multiplayer and single player as well sometimes chain attack doesn't strike after the animation that is a problem then we have a uh, weapon rotational accuracy penalty is not working so whenever you rotate, the uh, accuracy penalty should increase because obviously you're, you're doing some drastic movements, but I'm guessing it's not working properly. Next we have is design and balance. This is for multiplayer only. Flags, use team color equals true on some items. This is not intended design. It's kind of for modding, I guess. Okay. Then we have level design. Um, these are for, probably for different maps. As you can see, we have um, Scala Landing, Siege, Exploit, Underwater Route to G is being investigated. Okay, so some people can go underwater for some reason. Okay, it's an exploit. There it is. Then we have Siege Map, Castle of Fen Altali has a uh, occlusion. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. Occl occl yeah, I think so. Problems. Then we have Siege Map, Castle of Fen Altai. Um, Falling off the map location is known. So there's a place you can fall off the map. Another problem. Then we have Scala landings. There's a location on the map that has no physics. Really? I wonder what that looks like. Okay. Then we have Scala landings. Ramp issues are known. Then we have the siege ladder issues in uh, Bar of Venos. Uh, encirclement is known as well. Okay. Then for UI, uh, these are all multiplayer as well. We have. Lobby players can see party invite UI element for the players who are not playing Bannerlord. Okay, so that so you can invite people who aren't even playing Bannerlord and it kind of like, that's not how it's supposed to be shown. It's supposed to be shown to the people who are currently playing it. So, okay, makes sense. Then we have Siege Map Scala landing issues are known. Landing issue, oh, we could put this in here really. And then we have if players, Steam names have special letters, the names on chat will be bugged, okay. Sorting arrows is misplaced in the custom server list and suggests to party UI does not change when the player becomes the party leader. There it is. So uh, there it is. So we had a part one. Here's a part two. Uh, combined, both of these will be about what, 45 minutes, about a little bit over 20 minutes each. Hopefully you guys find it informative and all of that. Let me know what you guys think of it. I am going to go over the next one whenever the new big patch comes out. And we'll go from there. But like always, stay safe.